The unknown is always frightening, and what can be more mysterious than the cosmos and its inhabitants? That is why people are wary and, if possible, avoid sudden meetings with stone aliens of the universe. But such rendezvous long ago passed from the pages of fantasy books into real life. It is not necessary to recall the events of many years ago, such as the fall of the Tunguska meteorite. There are more modern examples. Remember, six years ago, another celestial visitor visited Chelyabinsk without asking, making a lot of noise. But meteorites, asteroids, and other objects do not necessarily come to Earth. We ourselves seek to visit them, if not in person, then by unmanned vehicles. The most accessible bodies are those that are within the boundaries of the solar system. One of these will be discussed. Hello. Thanks to Galileo's curiosity, humanity first learned about the four largest satellites of Jupiter. Leading among them is Ganymede. Named after the mythical companion of the great Zeus, it is the largest moon of our star system. Comparing its size with the satellite of the Earth, the gain will definitely be on the side of Ganymede. The Jupiterian moon is even larger than the planet Mercury. But these are not the only nuances of Ganymede's biography that can surprise you. A little later, you'll learn what this incredibly distant world looks like, what striking features it has, and you'll also get to know the frightening eye of Jupiter. In short, get your popcorn on. Progress has allowed mankind to view the celestial body not only with telescopes. Earthlings have observed Ganymede through the eyes of both pioneers and voyagers, as well as through the Galileo spacecraft. New Horizons also flew past the satellite. The first spacecraft, Pioneer 10, reached Jupiter in December 1973. It took a closer look at the main satellites of the gas giant, clarifying their density. The photos taken by the Pioneer 10 are rather poor quality due to the imperfection of the probe's hardware, but still, these are the first pictures of Ganymede and the other three Galilean moons. By the way, after exploring the Jupiter system, the Pioneer 10, with a gold plaque message on board, continued on its way, and communication with it was only cut off in 2003. The spacecraft is now 12 billion kilometers away from us. We want to believe that after 2 million years, the zone will still reach Aldebaran, in the direction of which it is headed. Follows the first interplanetary apparatus, Pioneer 11 did not make a revolution in the study of the satellites of the gas giant. It flew over the Jupiterian moons in 1974, and having collected a glimpse of express data about them, it went four million years to the constellation of Eagle. Three probes, the Voyagers and Galileo, were the most successful in exploring Ganymede. The latter orbited Jupiter from 1995 to 2003, collecting a lot of valuable information. Thanks to these satellites, we know what Ganymede looks like, what secrets it hides under the icy surface, and we can even hear the eerie lunar whales. But first things first, voyagers passed close to the Galilean satellite almost simultaneously in March and July 1979. The design of the spacecraft took into account past mistakes and their equipment was considerably expanded, so the result was incomparable to that demonstrated by the pioneers. For example, Voyager 2 photographed the cratered surface of Ganymede many times from a relatively close distance, and by combining the images, a collage was made to present the appearance of Jupiter's mysterious moon. 
It was voyagers that told the world about the exact dimensions of Ganymede and its geological features. Until 1979, Saturn's Titan was considered the largest satellite. But the greatest contribution to solving the mysteries of Ganymede was made by the Galileo Interplanetary Station. In addition to taking detailed photos of the satellite, which is covered by a crust of dirty ice, the probe made a real discovery. The research suggested that there is a liquid ocean beneath the surface of Ganymede. The implication is that it is 10 times deeper than Earth's and hidden under a 150 kilometer thick layer of ice. Scientists were led to this idea by traces of sodium and magnesium salts found in the spectrogram. Galileo also discovered a magnetosphere in the Jupiterian moon. This is a unique phenomenon. No other satellite in the solar system has this luxury. Even more surprising is the fact that the magnetosphere of Ganymede is completely autonomous and does not depend on the strong field of Jupiter. Do you want to see with your own eyes the frozen moon almost 630 million kilometer away? Then pay attention to the screen. Now we will visit a world of iron silicon rocks, water ice caps, extensive craters, and ancient tectonic rifts. The surface of Ganymede, which resembles a roller of unimaginable dimensions, is very cold. Temperatures do not rise above 170 C during the day and can drop to 200 C at night. Jupiter has domination over the sky of this moon. Its great bulk looms a million kilometers away from Ganymede. One revolution around the giant satellite takes just over a week. Ganymede has the thinnest oxygen atmosphere and smells of sulfur and cyan, a highly toxic gas that exudes the scent of almonds. As it turns out, the satellite is too colored the light part symbolizes the young landscape, and the dark part represents the ancient one, which is about 4 billion years old. Ganymede is spotted. The bright white, star-shaped areas are ice ejections that appeared after the formation of young craters, of which there are dozens on the Jupiterian satellite. Some of the old craters have left only ghosts relic traces of archaic catastrophes, called palimpsests. The largest of such ghosts is the Memphis Facula, 300 km in diameter. Let's wonder if there are any sounds in this dead world. Probes recorded the voice of the satellite magnetosphere, but hearing it, one wants to sit in silence for a while. Here it is the infernal area of Ganymede. The sound is reminiscent of the strongest thunderstorm possible on Earth, interspersed with powerful electric discharges and otherworldly howls. Not enough for you? Then one last thing worth mentioning is another mystery of the Galilean satellite. In 2014, the astronomical community went into a silent panic. Images from the Hubble telescope clearly showed that a monstrous pupil had appeared on the Great Red Spot. This made the interplanetary hurricane of unprecedented power look like a huge mystical eye. Fortunately, there were no catastrophic scenarios. Just a shadow from neighboring Ganymede fell on the vortex of Jupiter. In short, this icebound moon is so intriguing that it should definitely be studied in more detail. The European Space Agency plans to launch the JUICE probe in 2022. If everything goes according to plan, it will visit the Jupiter system in 2030 and orbit Ganymede in 2033. Are the topics of our videos of interest to you? If yes, give us a thumbs up and click on the bell to be the first to receive updates on the channel. For the final, we offer you an unusual entertainment. Go to the comments and continue the phrase, I have never. Spur your imagination. The most creative subscribers will get a priority right to order themes for future videos and also get to the end of the next video.